Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 13.3 has been out for a few days. I've been using it primarily on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. This is my main device. I've also used it on the iPhone 11, which isn't right here. And then I have it on the iPad Air 2. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And then I have a previous version on the iPhone 11 Pro so I can show you a new feature and or a little bit of a change that I didn't cover in the previous video. And so in this video, I'll talk about that feature first, then we'll talk about how it's been for me. Then we'll talk about how it's been for you based off the YouTube community poll. And then we'll look at the YouTube community poll and some of the comments themselves. So at this point there were over 300 comments and I believe the last time I checked over nine or 10,000 votes. So I really appreciate that in a fairly short amount of time. And then I'm recording this on Friday, but you'll probably see this on Saturday or Sunday. So it does take a while to record and edit. So the first thing is a new feature or a change that I didn't cover in the video pre or previously or prior. And so if we go into messages in messages on the iPhone 11 pro that I have in my left hand, this is actually running iOS 12.2.3. So this is a prior version and this is the new version in the right on my iPhone 11 pro max. So if I 3d press or haptic press on something, I've got a little menu that pops up here. So you'll see the little menu below. If I do the same thing on the previous version, we've sort of got a menu, but they've changed this around a little bit. So they've given us a little bit more. And then if we tap on more, you'll see, we've got the option to delete a bunch of things. So it's sort of the same. It's not, terribly different, but it is something to note. A lot of people were saying it was a new feature. I found that it was there before, but they've made this few little changes to it and tweaked the way it looks. Now, the first thing is I wanted to go over how it's been for me and I actually have had zero issues. In fact, this is probably one of the most stable versions I've seen in a long time. I've had no app crashes. I've had no issues with the exception of one thing. When I first set this up, I actually had that issue where I switch from Wi-Fi to LTE and it doesn't work properly. Most of the time it works fine, but I have had that issue a couple times. I even tried that on the iPhone 11 and came across the same thing. So here's the iPhone 11. At first I had it hard reboot fixes it every single time. So if you're having that issue and I know quite a few of you are based on the comments, I know people said they get sick of hearing this, but it seems to be an issue that's affecting people with newer phones. So, if, so if you have an iPhone 10 S or newer 10 S max 11 and all of those phones, you may experience this. If you have an Intel modem, other than that, I've had no crashes, no issues. Performance has been outstanding. I've had no slowdowns. You'll see it loaded. Now everything's nice and smooth. So really no issues whatsoever. Everything just loads quickly and Ram management has been good for me as well. So if we go into YouTube, you'll see, this is one of my videos. It didn't reload. And that was a few back as far as how long ago I opened it. So really no issues with it whatsoever. You'll see the weather reloaded there. If I go into camera, it takes a second to open, but we'll go back in and everything's working fine as far as RAM management. Now I know a lot of you want to know how battery has been. So let's talk about that a little bit. So we'll go into settings. And for me, I typically have pretty decent battery. We'll wait for it to load here. There we go. You'll see my battery health is at 100%. Now I know a few of you have said, can you address the issue of it going down when I update to a, to a different version? And what Apple is doing is actually checking for your battery health. After you update your battery health doesn't change based on the version that you have. It just simply rechecks that information every time it does an update. So it updates, rechecks the actual battery capacity, and then it may update or tweak that over time. Apple has not specified how often they check battery health, exactly how they measure it or anything like that. So it's nothing to worry about when updating, it's going to change regardless. So you may not see it yet on a previous version, but if you gave it a few days or a week, it will update and show you the lower number. So just keep that in mind. Don't worry about the battery health when you're updating because that does nothing as far as bringing it down. So as far as battery though, you'll see my capacity was 100%. Over the last 10 days, well, here's today specifically, I had two hours and 44 minutes of screen on time, one hour and 18 minutes of screen off time. That is using about 25% of my battery life there. So you'll see 25% is used and that's not bad. 70, actually 25% exactly. So 75% is left. Now 
I do put this on the charger when I drive my car. So it was on the charger for about five minutes today, not really much. So it's pretty decent screen on time. So if you extrapolate that out times four, we're getting about eh, three hours times four, 12 hours of screen on time. So if you're seeing you're using 25% of your battery life here, and then you've got two hours of screen on time, do times four, that will give you your total screen on time for 24 hours. Now, if you're charging throughout the days, that's not going to be accurate. So keep that in mind. Now, as far as battery life for you, based off the YouTube community poll, that's a little bit different. I would say a lot of you, probably 50% are saying it's great. 50% of you are saying it's terrible and it really is not specific to device. I've seen some with an iPhone seven that say it's great. And then I see others with an iPhone seven that say it's terrible. So it's really hit or miss based on probably what device you're using, what app you're running, what set of apps you're running, what you're doing with it throughout the day. So just keep that in mind. It's a very different experience for a lot of people. So I know some people are saying, when are they ever going to fix the issue with iPhone seven battery drain? And then others are saying it's fantastic. So it's really hit or miss. Now, a lot of you were saying you had issues with LTE connectivity and specifically a lot of you were saying that the bars were lower or you were dropping calls. Now, if the bars are lower, unfortunately, that's not a good way to actually measure connectivity because the signal strength, there's four different ones. So you could be zero to 25, 25 to 50% as far as connectivity. But a lot of this depends specifically on your cell towers around you, what their signal strength is, what your signal strength is, what the interference is like, what the weather is like, how many people are connected to it. There's so many factors that go into that, that it's really hard to say as far as signal strength without seeing actual decibel measurements. So Apple doesn't let us see those anymore. So there's no way to truly measure that. However, if you're having dropped calls more often, things like that, a few of you were mentioning that 13 of you mentioned issues with LTE. So again, if you haven't seen these before, here's all the stats of things that were mentioned. Battery was mentioned 144 times. Mail was mentioned 17 times. App crashes seven times problems with heat six times or actually less than that because many people said it was great this time around. Now, finally, before we talk about the YouTube community poll, people were saying they were having issues on older iPads, specifically maybe an iPad air two, maybe an older iPad mini where they would go and load an application and it would just take forever. So if we go into something like stocks that was already open, uh, let's go ahead and close a few of these out. There we go. We'll close everything. Let's go back into YouTube. And some people were saying it was taking up to 15 seconds to actually load an application. So Pixelmator, for example, that was closed. It's opening quickly. It really depends on the iPad, but I would give it a couple hours if it's doing things in the background, leave it on the charger, let it do things in the background and it should be fixed. Quite a few people were saying that though, that they were having issues with the iPad. Now, before we go into the YouTube community poll, there were a ton of different devices that you were using. Here are all the devices that people are using that mentioned it in the comments. So if you mention this in the comments, I'll show it here without you mentioning this. There's no way for me to know which device you're using, but thanks for everyone that mentioned that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the YouTube community poll. Now, as of this moment, there were 8.8 K or eight, almost 9,000 people that voted. So I really appreciate that. 324 of you actually commented, which is fantastic. So I've gone through all of these comments to get all of that data that we talked about already. And 58% of you said it was great. Only 4% of you said it was terrible. 14% said it was okay, but some bugs. 12% of you are on older versions and 12% of you are on Android. This number actually went down from 15% last time. So I know a lot of people were saying there's a lot of people from Android and it seems like there's more and more, well, it's going down, but either way, I appreciate you taking the time to vote and comment below. Now I have gone over all of these comments. It took me about an hour to put all the information together and then read over 300 comments and just put all that together. So I do take the time to go over these until it gets to too big of a number. So once it hit about three or 400, that's when I kind of stop and uh, I, can't possibly read all of them sometimes when I'm just so busy, but I'm glad I was able to get through all of these and I really appreciate it. So let's read some of them. Pretty good on my iPhone 11 pro max and iPad pro 2018, 11 inch battery seems improved over 13.2.3 for me. 
Love your videos. Thank you. I'm disappointed the beta four version on my iPhone seven was way better with the battery. It lasted 10 hours a day. Now it's six to seven hours a day. No heating up after I found no bugs, but battery life sucks. So battery life on an iPhone seven should be about four to five hours of screen on time, maybe six if you're lucky. So if it's a seven and not a seven plus, that's not bad. Feels the same as iOS 13.2.2. It runs well and battery life feels the same. 10s max 10s max. It fixed the LTE problem I had with 13.2.3. I haven't noticed any bugs as of yet. Battery life has been seven hours or so. Battery life is terrible. It's been two days of getting seven to eight hours of screen on time on the regular 10 to 12 hours on 11, iPhone 11. The normal iPhone 11 gets about seven hours of screen on time for most people. In fact, I did a poll recently about a follow-up video I'm doing, and most people were saying six to seven hours of screen on time. Don't expect 10 to 12 unless you have a Pro Max or a Pro. Very good on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. Battery seems a lot better. I haven't noticed any issues so far. It's the best version so far. Buttery smooth on my 10R. Zero issues so far. 10S user here and my battery health plummeted after the update. Again, that's what I mentioned before. It already plummeted before the update. It just remeasures it afterwards. So just keep that in mind. I know it's kind of disturbing, but that's why I've said time and time again, I would really like to see Apple remove the percentage and just put it good time to change it when it's bad. Battery on iPhone 7 Plus is horrendous. I get three hours of normal usage when I was used to be able to get a full day. And this is where I said it's really hit or miss. Some people say it's fantastic, others say it's not. 13.3 has been running fine on my Pro Max. No issues, great battery life and performance. I'm using an iPhone 8 and it performs pretty good, but still terrible battery life. Hope it gets fixed. I'm using an iPhone SE. It's been pretty stable for me and battery life is also good for me. It's great on my iPhone 10. Everything so far is running well iPhone 10 R smooth and better than other iOS versions on 13.3. One issue is Wi-Fi drops then reconnects and another issue. Sometimes cellular won't load on Safari and other stuff won't load on cellular. And that's where I keep saying people are saying they're having issues with LTE. It's okay on my seven plus everything running smoothly. Battery life seems okay to me so far. It's great on my iPhone seven plus iPhone 10 S removed so much bugs and battery life is great. Using it on my iPhone six S works great iPhone eight plus still draining heavily in standby 100 to 37% in a couple hours with 52 seconds of screen time health at 87%. You definitely have something going on in the background. In fact, after you update this particular update took a couple days for the battery to really improve. So I would plug it in, leave it while it's on Wi-Fi, let it do all of its background stuff, and then it should improve greatly. iPhone 11, it has been great so far getting 10 to 11 hours of screen on time. iOS 13.3 has been great. Battery life is incredible on iPhone 11 pro max. Cell connectivity has been solved for me. Great on 6s, no slowdowns, amazing battery life. I experience a bug from time to time when I'm in landscape mode and notifications ring. When I pull down the notification bar to swipe and clear it, it starts floating around the screen. I've actually seen that bug, but it's pretty rare, but it's kind of a odd bug that I've only seen, I think on two people that they've reported it, including yourself. It's been all right on my iPhone 11 pro max and my iPad pro 11 inch using on my iPhone 10 great experience. I use an iPad sixth generation, 128 gigabyte. It is running smoothly, but sometimes it will crash. I'm curious if you mean everything crashes or just a specific app. I had a problem with the control center not swiping down once. I had to turn off the screen and on again. Also, sometimes my data stops working and I have to turn it off and on to make it work. I'm on an iPhone 10. So you'll see, depending on what you're using, which device you're using, what apps you're using, you can have a very different experience on this particular update. Now, speaking of bugs and things like that, Apple should be releasing an update. Maybe it'll be a small one, maybe 13.3.1 to address a security issue with screen time and also the wideband bug for the newer iPhones, the iPhone 11, 11 pro and 11 pro max. There's a couple bugs in there where that's using location all the time. You'll see, I have the arrow here and there's no way to turn it off. Currently they're going to allow you to turn it off later. And then that screen time security bug will be fixed as well. So I don't know if we'll see that next week. It's possible 
possible we'll see that the week before Christmas in the United States, but I wouldn't expect any updates the week of Christmas. So that's a holiday here. And then into the new year is also a holiday. So we may get a couple weeks where they skip, but it's possible that next week we see that 13.3.1 and also 13.4 beta one. It wouldn't surprise me if they released it then, but it's really hard to say what they're going to do. They've done some different things in the past. Now, one more thing I wanted to mention is I'm using a screen protector. If you didn't notice, it's super clear. I'm going to talk about it in a different version because the other, the other video will be sponsored. This one's not, I've just been using this. It's a Sapphire screen protector. It's pretty expensive. I can link it below, but it's not sponsored here. They're not paying for this video or anything. I've just been using it and it's almost impossible to scratch unless you use something that's about a nine H hardness. So it's really hard to scratch unless you're using something like a diamond. So I've been using it. Unfortunately, it's got a couple air bubbles under. I do have another one I can use as well. So I'll talk about that in future videos, but let me know what you think about this update in the comments below. And when do you think iOS 13.4 beta one will come out and that update as well with security updates and fixes. Let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like as always. Thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.